in this video, I'll be taking you through the spatialization of sounds and a little bit of mixing tips. So the first thing that we'll want to do is go ahead and check all of my tracks just so I can get familiar with them. I'll solo each one. And this session is the sample session that you can download from our website. I've just deleted all of the automation data so we can redo the session. So let's start with the ambisonics ambience recording. Just moving it around to see where everything is. Sound like it's behind me. So it seems like this recording is centered. So we'll just put it right in the center. Now we'll check the singer. Yeah, that's obviously where it needs to be. We'll, we'll pan this view back to center by holding Alt and clicking on the head orientation control. The third is the woman. We'll solo her. See how that sounds. You have to excuse our recording here. It's not the greatest recording, but you get the idea. Okay, so that's the women, and then now everything together. Seems like the ambient sounds right. All the levels already sound about right, but if they don't, then you could always use the trim plugin. You could always use the volume fader directly on the work spatializer, or you could always use clip gain. And this was at negative 4.6, so let's bring it back to negative 4.6. And I'm holding command for fine increments. By holding command for fine increments, you can move by each decimal as opposed to each number. And this also applies to our controllers as well. Any one of these controllers, by holding command, you'll move by each decimal point. When you move in the distance parameter, you can move by decimal points. And when you move in the volume parameter, you can move slower through each number. Oh, and another way that you can raise the volume of tracks is by using Audio Suite. We'll go to Dynamics. We'll go to Maxim, which is a stock Pro Tools limiter. And we have the audio selected. We'll bring the ceiling down to negative 0.3 to make sure we're not clipping. We'll bring the threshold down to negative 3 to bring the whole volume up a bit. And we'll go ahead and render that. And as you can see, the volume went up. And this is just for your reference. Since you can't use the faders, you have to use alternate methods for volume control, and this could be one of them. So I'll just go ahead and undo that. And if you notice here, every sound is about level. The only thing that we need to do is 
spatialize the movement of the woman. Since the singer here is not moving, we don't have to write automation for him. We just have to place it there and we're set. And for the women, we're just gonna write the automation data as she walks by. So we'll go to the woman and we'll go to touch and she'll be coming out around this area and I'll just follow her movements. Notice how when she walked out to the right of my screen, my pattern just comes out on the other side. Amazing. Okay, so that's been written. Now, when she starts speaking, you'll probably want to cut off that portion of the audio and put it on another track and attach another slave so that it can be coming from the top of her. In this situation, we're just going to go ahead and skip that. But for your information, uh, that's something that you should do. Moving on. Now we're just gonna check to see how that sounds. And we'll go into HMD view. We'll take off the grid. Okay, I noticed a glitch here. There's a little glitch there when she goes off the screen from one side and comes out on the other side. And I'll show you how to fix that now. If we look at our automation data for the women, we have these parts where she goes off of the screen on one side and comes to the other side. We just simply need to adjust these breakpoints so that one so that they're both at 180 degrees. Okay, negative 180, and then this one needs to be moved to positive 180. And there they are. And we'll do the same for this side. Okay, and we'll check that. And notice how we don't have that glitch anymore. Okay, and then let's go ahead and adjust for distance. So we'll have the singer here and let's see how we'll go into HMD view. That sounds like he's a little too far. So we'll bring it up close a bit. That sounds fine. So now we'll go ahead and adjust for distance for the woman. But first let's see what it sounds like to see how much adjusting we need to do. Let's watch it again in HMD view. Like she's coming from behind me, to the left, now to my right, is she there, yep, there she is. To me, the distance sounds about right. So we don't have to adjust much 
for her distance, but I'll go ahead and show you how you would do it anyway. So first you would want to start off wherever your object is starting, which in this case, it would be right here. You'd apply a breakpoint there. And then you'd see where you want the object to end. So say it sounds the best at three feet away. And she seems like she's about 15 feet away. Then you just move your breakpoint until you get to the 15. Notice how my distance fader is moving. So I moved the breakpoint to about 15 feet away. And then by the time she gets to in front of me, it's the breakpoint should be about three feet away, which is there. And we'll just put another breakpoint there and we'll move this down to three feet. There's eight feet, the distance fader is moving down and there's three feet. So it'll move linearly from, from the 15 feet to the three feet. And that's how you'll go ahead and do it for whatever project you have going on. Let's check it out one more time in HMD view. Great, nothing's clipping. Now, we could bring the volume of everything up all at once by using our clip gain. So the way that you can use clip gain to bring all your volume up is by selecting all of them and holding Command, Control, Shift, and moving your scroll wheel up. This will move the clip gain of each and every one of your clips uniformly so that if you already have a mix that's that you're happy with and you simply want to bring everything up a few dB, you do it in this manner. Since we don't have controls of the master channel and we don't have controls of the volume faders on each and every track, we do it this way. So let's take a look again. And let's return to center by holding Alt and clicking. And let's play from about here. And you'll want to check, you want to look around like this to make sure you're not clipping anywhere because sometimes when you're looking straight ahead at the object, it won't be clipping. But then if you turn your head, it will be. So in those cases, you need to apply a limiter. Seems like there was a little bit of clipping there right there when I turned my head towards her direction. So we'll just go ahead and add a limiter here. And the limiter that we'll be using is the maximum limiter that comes stock with Pro Tools. And we'll simply put a out ceiling of negative five, negative 0 0.6 dB. And we'll see what happens there. Let's take a look. Okay, still clipping, so we'll bring that down a little bit more. And there's no longer clipping there. So remember to apply that to any one of your tracks that seems to be clipping. Just look at the meters that are registering the highest and bring down the ceiling until you no longer get that clipping. And remember to check your mix in every, in every direction. 
Now the only thing that's left to do is export. But before that, I'd like to talk about adding reverb and adding with to your sounds. Now, in order to apply reverb, you'll simply just have to apply the reverb directly onto the channel itself. And there are certain times where you want a sound to be wider than it is. For those instances, you'll need the sound to be stereo. If it's not already stereo, you can make it into stereo. But once it's in stereo, all you have to do is use a plugin called A1 Stereo Control. And it's a free AAX plugin as well as VST. I'll go ahead and make a new track so you can see what it looks like. And just by moving this up, you can increase the width of whatever sound it is. You can also make it completely mono. So yes, I hope that's been helpful. And if you need a little more clarification, you can always email me at support at gaudiolab.com. I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions, whether it be some tips on mixing, spatial audio, or simply using the plugin. Just shoot me a line and I'll get back to you.